We had a case where a customer was trying to run Reporting Services 2008 R2, and when they went to go hit Report Manager, they were actually seeing a blank screen. And typically when I see a blank screen, there's some error that's happening under the hood. It's probably an HTTP 500. Um, in my case, when I went to repro the issue, I'm actually getting a 503 indicating the service is unavailable. So in effect, it's the same thing. We're hitting some issue under the hoods that's preventing Report Manager from running. Um, we started collecting normal data. Uh, one of the questions that I'd asked is, um, you know, do we know what changed? Uh, unfortunately, uh, in this scenario, the person inherited the report server. They don't know what was changed uh, on the system uh, when they got it. Um, it. All they knew is that it just wasn't working. And so typically when I've seen this, this is usually related to a, like, one specific thing and so I immediately went to look at that aspect of this case and so one thing we can do is think about uh, URL reservations within inside of reporting services um, and one thing we can do to maybe possibly confirm if that's possibly the issues where we always start with reporting services is the log um, so let's go over to the machine that has reporting services and see what's in the log So I've got two reporting services instances on the box. I've got SSRS, which is actually SQL 2014, and then I've got my uh, where's my other one? Uh, my 2008 R2 reporting services, and that's the one we were hitting. So let's go look at that. Go into the log files, and let's go to the last one that's there. Sort to this on top. <clears throat> okay, and let's just go look for an error. And Let's see, we've got one there, disabled exception, error, here we go. So this is what we wanted to see. So in this case, we're, we're indicating that we failed to register the following URL, and this is a URL reservation itself. I, I know that because of this plus, that's usually indicative of the URL reservation. Um, and then we got an error equals uh, five. Uh, the error equals five is uh, access denied. And if we look right below that, uh, we do see an error um, that indicates that we there was an error creating the HTTP endpoint. We got an unauthorized access exception, access denied. So, so we know that we're having an issue creating the URL reservation itself. Um, to describe what a URL reservation is, let's go back and look at the report server, the RS report server .config file with Notepad. And so within the report server.config or RS report server.config, um, get to the right spot. <clears throat> within the RS report server.config, we can see uh, a section here called URL reservations. And we have two of them listed here. One is for report server web service, and the other one is for report manager. And then what you'll see here is the actual URL that we're registering, which is the plus colon 80. And that's basically saying the plus indicates that we're just going to bind to any IP address on this machine. We're not being specific about the IP address. And we're going to bind on port 80, which is the standard HTTP port. And then we can also see the account SID and the account name that we're actually binding to. Um, and we'll note here that it says NT Authority, uh, NT Authority Network Service. So uh, at this point, these are the URL reservations in there. So we do this for each virtual directory that we're going to host. The reason we have to do this is because we're not, uh, we, we have to make this reservation with inside of HTTP sys because we're not part of IIS. So if we were actually an IIS web application, um, IIS would take care of all this for us and we wouldn't, it, it would have to do this under the hoods, um, but we wouldn't have to worry about it from a reporting services perspective. But because we're not part of IIS and we bind to HTTP sys directly, we have to make these URL reservations. Okay, so we've got NT Authority, NT Authority Network Service. Um, we are uh, failing to actually create that endpoint. So one thing we can also do is go look at the endpoints themselves, uh, what URLs actually, or what reservations actually present. So we can do that by going to an admin command prompt. And the command we want to run is uh, net sh http show url ACL. 
And this will list out every URL reservation on the box. And so one thing we can see here is uh, we've got a couple. Um, we can see the, uh, the RS 2008R2 uh, URL reservations here, and we do see that they're bound to the user uh, NT Authority Network Service. Okay, so why are we failing? Uh, one thing we can do is check what is the actual service count that RS thinks it's using uh, and compare that to this. Um, so typically if it's an access denied, we're, I immediately think that the service count changed and the uh, URL reservation didn't. Um, so something happened there. And one question I actually asked early on was, did the customer change the service count? And that's when we found out that they didn't know that they inherited it. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got. Go into Report Server Configuration Manager. And here we do see network service here. So that's good. Let's exit out of that. And then if we go to the Computer Manager and we come look, here we can see that it doesn't show network service. And in fact, it shows RS server or RS service at guyinacube.com. So it looks like what happened is that someone changed the service count through the services uh, management piece and they didn't change it with inside a report server configuration manager. So report server configuration manager still thinks we're running as network service when in fact we're not. And so that's causing the access denied. So how do we fix this? A couple things we can do. Uh, first off, I would say let's change it back to the original account. Now, from that perspective, you may not know what the original account was. And what I would say is to go back to the account where the URL reservation actually indicates that it what owns those URL reservations. So in this case, I would say change it back to network service um, and see if that works. If that doesn't work, we'll have to go to a little more manual approach of actually deleting the URL reservations through NetSH. Um, but I don't want to do that off the gate because there's other implications of doing this, which I'll address in a second. So for this case, let's talk about, um, let, let's go ahead and change this back to network service. So we'll go to properties, log on. Uh, I'll change this to network service. Okay, let's clear out the password. Okay, yep. And let's restart the service. This should bring us back up and running. Okay, so we'll close the RS report server that config. Close that. Close that. Switch back over to our app server. Go and refresh, and we should get report manager. And we're back up. All right, so that fixed it. So uh, then, from that standpoint, we can go back into report uh, report server configuration manager and change the account there. So the way we would do that is, let's go back in here, yes, connect, go to the service account and say use another account and we can set it to RS service at that point. Um, so if we do that, we can do and we'll do apply. This will prompt us to back up the encryption key. This is a very important step. Yes. Yep. So we want to back up the encryption key because it's bound to that service count and it'll reapply that encryption key after the service count changes. So that's also why we don't want to change it in the services manager um, because if we change it there, we, we're not doing anything with the encryption key. And so even if we got past the URL reservation, we would um, we would still encounter an encryption key issue where like we couldn't decrypt the encrypted content. Um, so that's going to happen at that point. So either way, you're going to have an issue. Okay, so that was done. One thing you'll notice here is you'll see uh, in the results piece that it's removing the URL reservation and then it re-adds it back for the new service account. And if we come back here and rerun the NetSH command, we can see here for 2008R2 that we now show the RS service count, which is proper. So Reporting Services Configuration Manager will uh, alter those URL reservations correctly. It'll take care of the encryption key piece. Um, so if you're changing the service count, you want to do it through Reporting Services Configuration Manager. Um, starting with RS 2012 and later, 
this would only apply to native mode, but for 2008R2, this would be native mode and SharePoint integrated mode. Um, so let's take a look at um, the 2014 version of this and what this actually applies to 2012 and 2014 and what this is going to do. So if we go back to our apps and let's go to guy in a cube. So we actually have the same issue here where we changed the service count was changed, but the um, in the services manager and not in reporting services configuration manager. Um, and so based on what I said, you may think like, oh, you're going to hit the 503 again, but we're actually not. So in here, we just hit the uh, failed to decrypt error message, which means that the encryption keys are bad. So remember what I said before, even if the URL reservations are right, you're still going to hit an error because of the encryption key piece. So why are we hitting the encryption key error and not the 503 error? So if we go look back at our SQL box, uh, one thing we can see here is the report server uh, RS piece, uh, SSRS instance. We uh, we can see here that the actual user here is NT service report server dollar sign SSRS. This is the uh, service account SID, which means that the actual service itself has rights to these uh, URL reservations. So even if I change the service account itself, the service as a whole still has rights to these URL reservations. So it can actually register those SPNs correctly, or not the SPNs. The, it can register the URL reservations correctly. Um, so we don't encounter that error. But we still encounter the uh, the uh, decrypt error because the encryption key is still bad, and so to get that back, we'd have to change the service count back to the service SID, um, and then we can go and change it correctly with inside of Reporting Services Configuration Manager. So the moral of the story here is: whenever you're changing a service count, always do it through Reporting Services Configuration Manager, and always back up the encryption key so that you can reapply it if something bad happens. Um, so hopefully this helps if you ever encounter this issue. Um, so thanks for watching.